So I guess something that archivists usually struggle with is um, you're trying to patch gaps and uh, find documentation um, so you can make voices heard. A lot of, um, like a lot of stories and like history kind of goes um, without notice. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard the phrase, um, well-behaved women rarely make history. It's because that's pretty true. Like the only time you would ever see documentation of women in the past would be if they had been arrested. <laughs> um, and in that, in, in that case, like a lot of like older archives um, is trying to figure out like, how do you get um, women's history told or how do you get um, stories from enslaved people told in archives? Um, so right now is actually a really interesting time because we have the opportunity to make sure that we have the documentation for what's happening in our community right now. Um, but that's something we need everyone's help with. So we are working on a project right now. It's called Living the Living History Project. Um, and the goal of our collection is to preserve the events and experiences important to individuals and communities in our area right now regarding COVID-19. Um, it's open to members of the Malloy and the Rockville Center community or um, like the areas of Long Island around us. Um, we're hoping that people can submit their materials to our archive, um, journals, diary entries, photographs, videos, audio recordings, any like digital evidence that you have um, relating to the impact of COVID-19 on your lives and your family's lives and your communities. Um, we are accepting handwritten and like handwritten journals, physical artwork, things like that. Um, but later <laughs> when the school reopens and we can figure out how to get that done. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing in a nutshell. I have some like prompts for people who are wondering what kinds of things we were looking for. Um, like anything about the shift to working from home or online learning, teaching online classes, being a student, um, if you have any students who you think would want to participate, things about social distancing or self-quarantine, um, how like your work has been affected, how your life has changed, anything that has surprised you or challenged you or created new opportunities. I got um, someone sent an actually a really nice story about how they had never really had the opportunity to video chat with their family as a whole before this. Um, so that was like kind of cute. They sent like a little photo and um, so those are like things that you could do. Um, let us know. Um, but that's really the general gist of the project. Um, does anyone have any questions? We can also talk about like, because everyone's at home right now. Um, you can, Brianna like does a lot of oral histories. So there's an opportunity to like interview your family to learn more about their stories. Um, so we can help you figure out how to do like an oral history with your family members. Um, or how to manage like your own personal archives if now's the time to go through your photos, your albums, things like that, how to best store things. Uh, you can take those questions too. Yeah, and now is a really good time to do uh, oral history projects with family members. We're all home, and, uh, we're with our families, um, but even you could do remote oral history by kind of either using Zoom, you can use the record feature on Zoom, or you can record a phone conversation. Um, it's a really good time to kind of check in with family members and make sure that people have um, an outlet for all of the experiences that people are going through right now. Just asking people how they're doing or how they're coping or how they're handling. And then recording it is a really good way to kind of get the experience documented somehow. Um, in a kind of informal, but also um, valuable way. Um, and even doing oral history that doesn't have to do with um, COVID-19 is a good idea too, because people, your family members have had stories. I know there's stories within my own family that it's word of mouth, you know, they get passed down through generations. And they're not documented in any way, but people just kind of know them no. and get passed on. Um, it's a really good time to get those recorded and have them um, documented in some way. Just asking the family to, you know, speak about their experience throughout their lives. Um, a couple of tips that you wait and that you can do that almost every kind of device. Has, you know, 
and that's fine. You can just use that and record on your phone or on your, you know, iPad, tablet, whatever. Um, but now is a good time to do that. I put the coffee in the microwave. And I can okay. And what do you want me to do? Hold on. Can you please, anybody who's not muted, please mute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna and Christine. Um, it's a great project. Does anybody have any questions for Brianna and Christine about uh, some of the ideas you might have or material you have and you want to ask them whether or not this would be archivable or should be sent to them? I'll check the chat. Okay. So Jackie Williams is sharing that um, she had a Zoom call with cousins this weekend and somebody was asking for family photos to share uh, that they're, they're actually posting them to Ancestry.com. Um, so can people send photographs? Yeah. Um, activities that they might be doing at this time of year? Yeah, um, the form that we have up is um, on our website. I can give me two seconds. I'll just send it in the chat right now. So everyone That'd can be great. see it. Um, so Kimberly is asking, she says, she seems like this would be very personal at this moment. Is that what you want or is it only Malloy related? Can you explain that? Um, I think it, if, if you have a personal story to share, then it should be personal. Um, it is a time for everyone to tell their own stories for an archive. It's not necessarily like explicitly Moai related, um, but if like because you are a part of the Moai community, um, then I guess in that aspect it's Moai related, but we're not necessarily looking for like things that only have to do with like working from home or like online classes or things like that. This is part of a larger project, the Long Island, a Long Island history project you're working on? Um, this is something that we saw that a lot of other schools and institutions were doing. Um, so it's on, it's, I guess it's like insulated in Malloy in that aspect. Um, I think the inspiration for other institutions doing this was that um, it's very rare to live through something so you know, dramatically, you can see, I think someone had equated it to like living through a textbook chapter, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, like this is going to be talked about, you know, for years and years to come. So documenting that experience is something that we can do now, instead of having to fill in those gaps later, like Christine was mentioning earlier, you know, sometimes there's history that is just, you don't have documentation for it. So if we can get it while it's happening now, it's really um, important to have. So the, if, if I have, if I'm saying this the wrong way, both Christine and uh, Brianna, who are the, the archivists, not me, um, that pe people look to archives when they're doing research projects. Um, so 20 years from now, if anybody wanted to know what was going on on Long Island during this horrible COVID pandemic, they would be able to use this as a resource? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Um, so also that means that you, anybody who is listening to this conversation or has seen Christine's um, emails about it, she did send an email to the Malloy community. Um, and did that go to our students also, Christine? Yes. Okay. Um, that this could be circulated even further out. So if you are, if you are part of a group that is just part of this Long Island metropolitan area and they have stories that they want to share and a place to archive it, that also could be sent in. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Okay. The, um, does anybody else have any other questions for them? Uh, Carrie Tomo is asking if this went out to our alumni. Do you know if it did? Um, I, I don't think it did. Okay, so um, that is that is a wonderful area that um, you could send it to. You could send it to Mary Jane Riley because she can then get it out to all of our alumni. And of course we have thousands and thousands of healthcare professionals who are out in the trenches. Yes. Uh, so those are stories that we wanna make sure that we keep. 
Um, Anybody have, have any other suggestions of places that Christine and Brianna could reach out to or that we could send this information to? Christine, did you want to say something else? Oh, uh, I just saw that in the chat someone asked if typewritten stories work. Those are fine. And then um, photos you can send in the email link I sent in the chat, the living history one, there is a Google form. Um, so if you go all the way down, there's a Google form or you can use the Microsoft form. Either one works. Uh, the Microsoft form will work with Outlook emails. The Google form, um, you can only upload if you have an at Gmail uh, web like email address. Um, you could submit photos there. They'll upload to my drive and I'll see them. Okay. What we could do is we can include this link um, underneath today's coffee talk recording. Please. Um, so people, if you don't, if you, if you can't grab it off of this and you didn't see Christine's email, it will be there. So if you ever go back in and view the coffee talks, this link will be part of that archive. See, we're starting our own archive, Christine. <laughs> coffee talks will be held in archives forever and ever. <laughs> um, so Larissa is on and she has just said, made sure want to, she wanted to let people know that they have shared the project information with the Nassau County Library System. So it, it has gone out to the entire Nassau County Library System. So I thank you both, uh, you know, welcome to Malloy. It's an interesting time for the two of you to have, uh, have begun your careers with us. Um, is there anybody else on that is relatively new to Malloy? Again, as I said, I think Brianna started in the fall and Christine in January or February. Wow. Um, is there anybody else online that is as new as they are? Because um, there's, you know, they're they're getting their feet wet at a whole different period of time from Malloy. Oh, Ryan, you just came in September too, right? Ryan's only been with us this academic year. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you both, Christine and Brianna, for being with us this morning. Thank you for sharing the work that you are doing from home, what work you're doing remotely. Um, again, if you have anything that you want to share or pieces of information that you think our archives need to know, uh, get that to that website. And um, I have a, uh, a thank you from Nancy Anzalone. And again, yes, tomorrow we are celebrating Founders Day. Uh, it is a day when we, the college has traditionally been closed and we have no classes. So we will see you on Wednesday, which is Earth Day. I see that Andrew from the Sustainability Center is on here today. We do have Kyle showing, I think, a video about Earth Day from our CIRCOM uh, program. So we look forward to that, everybody. And, um, and since we are home, and we have time to think about how we can care for the earth. This is a good time to do it. So um, happy Founders Week, happy Earth Week, and I'll see you guys Wednesday, all right? Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs>